Hey guys, it's Yuta. So, this song is very important in the context of Japanese popular culture, and some people think it's one of those generation defining songs. And it sounds like this. Use. I obviously listen to this song for research purposes only, and I definitely don't catch myself singing this song because the chorus is so catchy. This song got 10 million views only after a couple of months, and now it has more than 140 million views. It's probably the most popular song in the past couple of years. The title, Usewa, can directly be translated as something like noisy, as in you are too noisy, but more conventionally, it's translated as shut up. The song got very mixed reactions, even though it's very popular. Some people loved it. This person said, I express my daily tiredness with this song and sing. But some people hate it with passion. This person says, This song is naturally creepy and cringy, worse than rubbish. Parents especially didn't like this song because their kids sing it all the time, telling their parents to shut up. This mom said, These words are bad for kids' education. And this is not exactly the kind of song that tells kids to listen to their parents and teachers. So what is the song about? Let's take a look at the lyrics together because you might not speak Japanese. But if you want to learn Japanese with me, I will teach you the kind of Japanese that real-life Japanese people today actually speak, which can be different from the kind of Japanese that textbooks and apps teach you. So click the link in the description and subscribe. So the song goes like this. From a young age, I've been a good kid. Before I knew it, I was already a grown-up. So you can already see that she's the type of person who's listened to her parents and teachers. When she was little, people around her would say that, oh, she's such a good kid. But is she really happy? But I'm not having enough fun. Something is missing. These troubles better be somebody's fault. You can see that she always tries to meet other people's expectations. She hasn't been doing what she really wants, but she doesn't know what she really wants either, and she doesn't know what's missing in her life. Checking economy news on my way to work. Joining a company with a pure mind. These are the obvious rules when you have a job. So now she works for a company, and as always, she does what she's supposed to do. That's what she's been doing all her life. This is the initial setup of the song, but what she really wants to say is in the chorus. And it goes, Huh? Shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm healthier than you think. And Usewa is also the title of the song. It's very catchy and you hear this repeatedly. She's expressing her frustration and anger. She's probably saying this to her boss. Now, what healthy means here is unclear. But it makes me think of a person who watches a lot of hen anime and plays video games in their room. They don't go out very often and they probably don't have a lot of friends. So other people think they are unhealthy. But she says, You are too mediocre to understand me, perhaps. Now, let's think about how she sees herself. She thinks other people are mediocre which implies that she thinks she is somewhat special. She's better than other people. But then she says, Yeah, I'm an exemplary person. So no thank you to actually punching someone. So here she goes back to her usual good kid, good student, good employee persona. You can see the gap between her inner self and outer self. Inside, she thinks she is special. She is angry and frustrated. But Outside, she's a good employee, and she acts like other mediocre people. Then she goes, If I'll point my muzzle of words to your head and fire. So she attacks people only verbally and not physically. This is like she's been bottling up her anger and she finally snaps. At the same time, she still thinks rationally and she doesn't resort to violence. But there are so many things that she finds annoying. I'm fucking tired. Pour drinks when glasses are empty. 
This implies that she's pretty young and she hasn't been working for this company for a long time. She's one of the youngest people, so she has to do a lot of stuff for her co-workers and bosses who are senior to her. To be fair, not many people would like this. And she goes, Huh? Shut up, shut up, shut up! Close your stinking mouth, I can't stand it! This is a pretty popular line and I can see that because many people dream of saying this to their boss. So you can see how this song resonates with people who are frustrated at work or in school. But then she goes as far as to say, I'm your so-called genius. And this is a little over the top. Of course, she's been a good student and she probably works for a good company, but there's nothing that shows that she's exceptionally gifted. She hasn't done anything impressive in her life and she's not doing anything either. It's probably just her who thinks she's very special and her confidence is unfounded. Do you know we have a word for this kind of attitude? It's Chunibyo or 8th grade syndrome, which I discussed extensively in another video. It's a typical middle schooler mindset, the beliefs that they have some type of special power even though they haven't achieved anything. And some of them believe that they are actually a dangerous person even though they are very quiet outside. They think being crazy and dangerous is cool and they are so different from other mediocre people. In this song, the protagonist isn't a middle schooler. She's an adult and she has a job. But she still has this Chunibyo mindset which is very cringy. But then again, many young people who start working for a company for the first time feel like this. They overestimate their competence and they feel like they can do a much better job than their seniors, even though they haven't achieved anything yet. There's nothing special about this kind of mindset and that's probably one of the reasons why this song is so popular. And the song is aware of that. Listen to this last part. I know I'm not a big deal either, but I don't care, no problem at all. Many people are missing this part but this is quite important because it adds another layer to the song. Despite the fact that she's been saying, oh I'm a genius, other people are mediocre, she kind of knows that she's not as special as she thinks. And that's probably why she's so frustrated. She doesn't want to think about the fact that she might be as mediocre as other people. So you can also think of this song as a satirical take of people like her. In the last part of the music video, there's a red dot on her forehead. It's like her own criticism is coming back to her. This is an important nuance that you shouldn't be missing. Now, when I heard this song, I thought, yeah, I know people like this person and I don't like them. This song doesn't resonate with me because I'm not that kind of person and I'm in a very different situation. But the song reminds me of some people I met in my university. They are the type of people who do what other people expect them to do. They certainly studied very hard to get into that university. And since it's the type of university that people look up to, they might feel somewhat superior. So, big ego. At the same time, they are afraid of confrontations and they don't know how to express their opinions in a constructive way. If you ask them to do something, they would say yes even though they might not be happy with it. They might just complain about it afterwards behind your back. It's not easy to know what they really think because they will give you the kind of answer that you want to hear, not the kind of answer they really want to give. It's not necessarily hard to deal with that kind of people because on the superficial level they say yes to your request. But if you're in a closer relationship, for example, if you date them or if you marry them, it's not going to be easy because you don't really know what they really think. They complain but they don't really do anything to change the situation. But they still think that they are somewhat special. So I don't like that kind of person at all. But I can totally understand why many people find this song relatable because we have many of those people in Japan. But there's another very important context that you need to understand. If you are familiar with Japanese popular culture and listen to this song, you will probably think that this song sounds like a Vocaloid song. 
And that's because this song is coming from the Vocaloid culture. In case you don't know, Vocaloids are virtual singers like Hatsune Miku. The person who wrote this song, Shido, has written a lot of songs for Hatsune Miku. So this song is part of the Vocaloid culture. Now, Hatsune Miku has been around for about 15 years. So the community of Vocaloid producers has been around for more than a decade. But the culture used to be much more underground than mainstream even though we've had popular songs written by Vocaloid composers. The kind of people who listen to a lot of pure Vocaloid songs were the kind of people who'd spend a lot of time online. With Vocaloid, you can complete the entire process of making music without getting out of your room, and you don't even have to sing, because Vocaloids take care of that. And because of that, it's easier to write the kind of lyrics that would be very embarrassing to sing. There are many songs that typically wouldn't make it to the mainstream music scene. But things have changed lately. Vocaloid music has become very popular and originally Vocaloid artists like Yurushika or Yosobi are popular in the mainstream music scene. In fact, Kenshin Yonezu who's probably the most popular mainstream musician in Japan today, used to make a lot of Vocaloid songs. His current songs don't quite sound like Vocaloid music, but with Yorushika and Yosuri, their songs are very, very Vocaloid-ish. And now we have Usewa, which sounds like a cover version of a Vocaloid song, and it has a lot of mainstream success. But come to think about it, this is just another case of underground music becoming mainstream. It has happened so many times in history. But there's a lot to talk about when it comes to popular culture in Japan. And just with Vocaloid, I barely just scratched the surface. So if you want to learn more about Japanese popular culture, you need to learn Japanese. And if you want to learn Japanese with me, I will teach you the kind of Japanese that real life Japanese people today actually speak, which can be different from the kind of Japanese that textbooks and apps teach you because they can be unnatural and outdated. So click the link and subscribe to my email group, Japanese with Yuta. Alright, see you guys soon. Ciao, ciao!